We come in the order of 1 Corinthians 2. Paul says, When I came to you, I did not come with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So every word we author here today under the power of the Holy Spirit uh, would fulfill itself because the Spirit carries it and the Spirit bears witness to the Word of God. So we are going to teach, oh sure, we are going to teach, oh sure. But let me say this to you. One of the reasons we come in the order we come. Hmm? <clears throat> 30 ways to love a man cannot fix disease when he hits a family. You know, I, I saw how you guys cleared this place for prayer on Tuesdays or so. Ha, I'm like this pastor. Oh, I love this pastor. Legalagaba, irada, irada. Now fine, pastor, no fine. Fifteen ways to reconcile does not fix certain demonic quarrels. This one, you just know a demon. A demon entered the house. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say I'm ready. Say I'm ready. Let me say this before we start, before you sit down, so that we can do the introduction together. The primary institution God desires to run the earth by is marriage. Like Pastor said, when man fell and he brought the plan of salvation, which he had because he knew, he still likens the relationship of the church to marriage. That's how powerful the original institution is. Go back to the law of first mention. What institution did he set in place when he created man? Marriage. If that thing fails, you know, pastor was giving his own resume. His resume is small. Uh, we, we, they were married, but uh, <laughs> my parents are separated on us. Eight divorced by time I was ten. I've had four mothers. When I met this woman, I told her, pop and plain. I don't know what it means for a man to love a woman. Because I have no living memory of my mother and father being in love other than being divorced. It doesn't exist. So I see you're my only chance. I won't blow it. One chance. This is my one chance. And it's not being blown. 18 years ago, I met this beautiful girl. In December, it will be 11 years in marriage. And I love the woman I have today than the one I married 10 years plus ago. I'm telling you. So you are going to be blessed this morning. You can now sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, they have not even heard your voice today, yeah? Let them hear you. Praise the Lord. Mm. <laughs> Shook me the voice. Woo! We are excited to be in your midst this morning. Oh, my Lord. And we are excited for you guys. We are really happy. For the pastors that God has blessed you with. Bara, bara, bara. God is feeding you guys rich food. Engle, gale, As in gale. entering here, we sense it. We see it. Mm. You are blessed. You are blessed. And we thank you, pastor. Thank you so much for your investment in these lives. God will bless you and bless your generations. Thank you. My wife is proof that if you marry the person God wants you to marry, even the things you think they don't have, you can bring it out. My wife warned that if I wanted to be a pastor, I should mind my business. I told her I was a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer. I am still a lawyer. I told her I would always serve Jesus. She hated publicity and the mic. But if I go and sit down right now, I'll send seven reminders before my wife will start coming down. In the first service, I thought on before you say I do. And I talked about identity and catching the concept that God wants you to understand of marriage. In this service, we are going to focus on after you say I do because you are going to be married if you are not yet married and because you are married if you are married already. So we are going to just gist through and lay certain foundations or make certain reminders of things you know. So the first thing you must do after you say I do is to defend, to guard, and uphold the picture. Please go get the message from the first service where I talked about the concept that God passed. Let me say this to you. More marriages are failing because people have not defended the picture. 
You know, when people begin to settle for quarreling, like they're married to quarrel, or people begin to settle for fighting, is because they have lost a picture they should be defending. There was a picture that produced the marriage. The marriage did not happen just because two people got hurt. You know, H-O-T. Or people, two, two persons became attracted to themselves. That's good enough, but that's not all there is to it. There's a purpose for which they came to be together. All right, so the first thing you do is to begin to defend the picture. Now, jump to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and let me lay a foundation there. There's a picture God had in mind when he made Julia meet Ucholi. And let me say this to you. The devil will repeatedly and persistently fight your actualization of the picture. There's a picture he has in mind. Why is there so much crisis on the marriage? Why is there so much attack on the marriage? Because he wants to corrupt a picture. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Excuse me. How do you walk and war become one? He said you were just walking your own, but there's a war involved. Next verse. He said, for the weapons of our warfare, excuse me, did you enlist in an army? You didn't pick the battle, the battle picked you. <laughs> and God, God did not say, reject the battle, he said there's a war. Let me even ask, man of God, why did we get an armor if we're not at battle? Why did he say put on, put on the whole armor of God? Did I say I am fighting? Because a battle selected you. You know the battle that selected him? The battle he referred to. <laughs> but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let's identify. Semicolon. I don't really, I'm not very good with English, but semicolon, I know the meaning. Explanation is coming. <laughs> Let's go on. Next verse. Casting down imagine. More marriages are failing because of the imag imaginations gathered before they're married. That's why more marriages are failing. That's why some of us seated here today, you are going to go to social media and audit what you follow. I saw one foolish one day that day. Said, please, 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 please. I am a human. Don't put pressure on me with the proverb 31 woman. That's a fool. Her following is large. Why won't I put pressure on you with the Proverbs 31 woman so that you can die in the fall of man? What's the abuse of the word of God? For correction, for rebuke, for instruction in righteousness. Men are coming to the point where they call this, don't put pressure on me. This is not pressure, this is life. This is not pressure, this is life. Let me tell you, the long and short of why this woman is happy is because this is happening. I was wrecked enough to wreck a woman. Like me, many of you have had to deal with pain by people who don't even know they have caused you pain and have no apology to offer. Like me, many of you are coming from systems that made it impossible to conceive marriage as a sweet thing. This became my hope and translated to her hope. Casting down imaginations. Why did the devil come for you so early? We were conceived in iniquity. You grew up seeing marriage fail. Your subconscious is locked with a picture. So God says we should catch a picture. Why? He said, as we behold him as in the glass, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, but we all with unveiled face. That means I'm vulnerable before him. You know what Pastor was doing? I was just doing vulnerability. See, I'm a product of fornication. See, let's not try to hide where we are coming from. Mess happened. I came out of it. It's Pastor Kingsley Okonko that said, you may come out of a broken home, but don't let a broken home come out of you. Mess! Some of us, it's not just the mess that happened through our family or our neighbors, our uncles or our aunties. You know, there are people when they talk to you, man of God, they, they have the history of all their aunties that have not married at 57. 
You know what's happening? The devil is planting an imagination. They have pictures of marriages that have failed. You know, as I was saying, marriage is scam. Marriage is not scam. It's a picture you swallowed. But as we behold him as in the glass, we become like him. So the first thing everybody married in Christ must do is to defend the picture. Is to defend the picture. The picture I was, you know, I was planted with is a lie. If you don't learn to call certain things out, you will not live the right life. That's why I'm very vocal when I see those people posting nonsense on social media. Ah, I know they keep quiet for that one. Why? If you put poison in your cup, it may kill only you. But when you put it in public stream, my children may grow up to drink it. Yes, sir. When my children grow up, let them be able to quote the things I called out as a lie. That's a lie! That's a lie! That's a lie! And this is the truth! Let me tell you. If I read only this book and nothing else, I'll be a good husband. Because it tells me to love my wife as Christ loved the church. How? While we're yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. My love is restorative, not judgmental. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me thou fights till I'm found, leaves the nine to nine. Hey, hey, hey. Bros, 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 let me tell you. Stop singing that song and crying in church. Go and love your wife with it. Stop tearing up in church. When you sing such a song as a man, remember it's an instruction to you. Oh, the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of a tree. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the ninety. Ninety-nine other women. Uh, this is not just leaving the ninety-nine of uh, I, I love them to know. Tell your male neighbors, let them go. Let them go. Say, my brother, let them go. Let me, let me, before Julia begins to speak, let me give a very clear analysis. When I say it's to defend the picture, let me now tell you. You know, I love, I love pastor. When pastor was talking, oh. Every man in this room, let me tell you the truth, an African truth infidelity was built into you as a way of life. Let me come down. Maybe it will be your turn shortly. Wait. Infidelity was, was infused in us. We were soaked in the knowledge of it. Remember what I said in the first service about God gave a concept before he gave the woman. You saw men get away with it. Maybe your fathers too. There are people sitting there, you know your father's babes, all of them. You know when he changed them. It was planted in you as a way. You didn't just see men get away with it. You saw women put up with it. So something in you told you your wife would survive it. Planted a picture that is dangerous. Let me say this to you, man of God. I say this with every sense of responsibility. I tell people the reason I don't share any story of scandal. By the way, when sometimes some news are making rounds in the body of Christ, I counsel some of the people involved. But you will never hear my voice because scandal is an opportunity for the devil to weaken the body. Yes, sir. So a gentleman is standing and saying, if that man of God can do it, who am I? Yes, sir. It's a picture. It's a picture. I don't share it. Ask people close to me. If I ever address it in close circles, I teach principles based on it. Why? It's a general system of weakening the body. So the person stands there and says, Cry! And can I tell you, God told me this one, I was shocked. He says, Do you know I cover my body? Do you know I protect even in those situations? I still protect. He says, It's not just the person involved, it's the army that will fall after the person. Yes, so he said, There are stories that have not let go out. Not because I'm endorsing the sin of the person falling, but I must protect an army whose picture must be protected. So, you thought it was just divorce. You thought it was just your neighbors were fighting. Something entered you. Something entered you. So there's a picture to protect. Something entered that said it's okay. 
Something entered that say he got away with it. Something entered that say he has three wives, but see, he has money. And that's why we must teach people to find God, not things. Because people can find things minus God. <laughs> people can find things minus God. Be careful what the devil convinces you you can get away with. That's the picture we're talking about. So the guy gets married, takes oath of marriage in church, and does not understand why adultery makes sense to him. He doesn't understand. A picture was planted. So the first contention you do after I do is to ask yourself, what must I reject, including the ones that are inside? What must I pluck out? Uh, can we uh, go to uh, Romans chapter 12? I really hope you have uh, the Amplified or the Message Translation. If you do, please search that out. I want to read it from the message precisely. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. If you don't have that, just put what you have. All right? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse. And be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the contention we're talking about. We're going to show uh, in the other points we'll make how you contend to protect that mind. See, <laughs> you will like us, man. <laughs> you know what the devil does? Many times he comes to give you suggestions that contends with the truth. Do you know you're a married man sometimes? Satan will just come and tell you, if your wife dies now, which kind of girl will you marry? Then you begin to, before you know it, you are finding yourself, this one, you are not even doing adultery, is that she will die. First thing he's asking for is permission to kill your wife. Then he wants your lust to get engaged in giving that permission. So you begin to assess your wife and look at what you think she misses or she doesn't have. And you begin to fish around church for somebody you think has it. You are behaving like you don't think. You are behaving like those demons don't come to you. That's why sometimes some people are amazed. You just see me in my office, I can just stand up. Julia is not dying. Julia is not dying. She is living. We are living to old age, my brother. Then you begin to calculate. Ah, will you find a good stepmom for your children? Demons. Imaginations. Imagination. Seeking permission. Or it just comes to say, you know, God has forgiven you. You have forgiveness in advance. When you begin to hear preaching that encourages you to sin, your mind is telling you, I'm forgiven. Even God knows I'm weak. Pastor even said in church today, I'm not perfect. Do I know the meaning of that? Do I know even what pastor has not told us? You see demons preaching. They hold mic very well. So what do you do? You protect the picture. That's when to carry the Bible and say, what does it mean to be a husband? What does it mean to be a wife? Have you found that? Okay, please read that for me. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Who is helping you? Uh-huh. Take your everyday ordinary life. Uh-huh. Your sleeping, mm -hmm. eating, mm -hmm. going to work, mm -hmm. and walking around life. And place it before God mm -hmm. as an offering. Mm -hmm. Embrace what God does for you mm -hmm. as the best thing you can do for him. Mm -hmm. Do not become so well adjusted to your culture. Hold on. Do not become so well adjusted to your culture. Mm -hmm. That you fit into it without even thinking. That you fit into it without even thinking. Yes. Instead. Instead. Fix your attention on fix God. Fix your attention on God. And you'll be changed. And you'll be changed. From the inside from out. From the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you. Readily recognize what he wants from you. And quickly respond to and it. And quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you. Unlike the culture around you. Always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. This is what the, the culture is doing to us. It's dragging us down to its level of immaturity. Do you know when a man cannot hold his penis, he's immature? Do you know? <laughs> you don't do. Continue. What's my number one point? You must protect what? You must protect what? You must protect what? Because when we talk about marriage working, most times people think of the other person. 
Go ahead. God brings the best out of you, develops well formed maturity in you. God brings the best out of you, develops well formed maturity in you. You know, to beat a woman, eh, you must be so immature. Foolishness must be resident in you. Time will fail us, but take for reference, read um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 33, uh, particularly the message translation. I'll just pause here. Julia, would, uh, he, okay, you have it already. Hey, I married a wife, not a knife. Glory. Read. Since my wife, if I enter, start. He has told you the importance of upholding the picture. We are being bombarded every day, day in, day out. If you look at the amount of time you spend on social media alone, you are getting an education. You must counter that. Bible tells us we are being transformed from uh, glory to glory as we behold the glory of God. How do you behold? You must put the right picture. And that right picture is the Bible. How many of us actually study and read the Bible? I know this is a good church. You guys are Bible-believing you know, and you read your Bibles. If you are not reading your Bible, you are deceiving yourself. The only way that God can transform you is through his word. If you are not beholding it, that weakness that you have struggled with year in, year out, you continue struggling with, uh, with it because you are not, you know, beholding the image of God, the glory of God that, his, uh, that the Holy Spirit can use to transform you. So I want us to look at the picture from the Bible. What is God's expectation for marriage? You know, my husband was mentioning earlier and he was saying, uh, it, it, the moment you mention sub, before you even complete the submission, as in a lot of people are already at, trying to attack you. What are you attacking? If you're a Christian here, please, ladies, this is kingdom culture. Submission is our culture. This is what God calls us to do. God is asking us to submit as wives, not to abuse us. God is, God is a loving father. His intention is not to abuse. He even places the weightier assignment on the man to love as Christ loved the church. So God's... Uh, the way God wants us to run marriage is written in the word. And I'm going to read it here. I'm going to read uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 from verses 22 to 33. Before Julia reads here, let me quickly say this because a lot of people seek balance in this. God's original order was to give the submitted woman to the submitted man. Yes. So if you are single in this house, um, please don't focus on challenging the concept of submission. Uh, focus on picking a submitted man because God's order is the woman submitted to her husband and her husband submitted to Christ and Christ to God and let me quickly speak to the guys in this house that God did not tell women to submit to men God told women to submit to their own husbands so because you are male and have a penis does not mean that every woman is under your feet all right now um, why is that important uh, just like Paul advised them and told many of them to avoid certain brothers amongst them. My dear sister, a man is not up for consideration of marriage uh, if you check out his relationship with other ladies and is not respectful. He's a future abuser. Because sometimes people miss these signals. You watch his general relationship. And let me tell you, brothers, one of the clues you need to have if you have sense as a brother is what is your general reputation among the sisters? So my sister, while you don't listen to gossip, it's important to know what is his reputation amongst women. Hello? Hi. What's your reputation? You know there's the... Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church. Not by domineering, but by cherishing. Somebody say not by domineering, but by cherishing. Let me tell you the honest truth. I keep telling people, and my wife's, like when they say woman rapper, right? But I don't know anybody under another person's control on earth right now, like this woman is under my control. <laughs> 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 I have a mumu button. <laughs> this girl, I, 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 I get anything I want. And you know how? 
by loving her lavishly. If you follow me, you know I talk about my wife more than myself. I'm buying peace for myself. I have a very peaceful life. The, the way I love my wife is not possible. The way I defend my wife, you can't try it. I kill you. Somebody say, hey, you didn't hear that the Gio, the righteous that the Gio. That the Gio. Say the only thing, the only thing that can make him kill a better touch his wife. You know, some men, eh, their stupidity is intense. You are punishing a woman and you think you have peace. You are foolish. You are hiding a camp. What, what do you even have? You and Dango take, I ain't compete. You are hiding money, change. Ordinary 16,507 kobo in your account, you are like, behaving like you are rich. When last did you send something that shook her balance? She just called and said, baby, um, I noticed you just sent some money. Like, what am I using for? I said, keep it. Yeah. When you are coming home that night, you know you are settled. Yeah. Say, just keep it. Continue. It says that Christ offers the church leadership. Men are called to be leaders. If you cannot pastor your own household, why are you eager to marry? It's a heavy assignment. And families are failing because a lot of men are not stepping into the shoes of leadership. Look at the way Christ leads the church. Men are called to be leaders. If you, are, if, if you marry a man that is not sitting in his position as a leader, you will be frustrated as a woman. You will push a man. Do you know how hard it is to push a man? Let's allow that man to be a leader. If that man is not taking the initiative, he's not taking the initiative to move the relationship, don't push it. You will suffer when you marry that man. God wants you to stand in position as a leader, as a priest over your home. And you cannot do that if you don't feast on the word of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself an, a, a, an approved workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to pastor your home so that your wife can transfer this. You and your wife can transfer that to your children and to the generations after them. But you need to stand in the position of a leader. Let me say something in addition to that. Husbands, you want to learn how to pastor your wife because we want to be taking these scriptures and make them as practical. This is Jesus' love letter to us, his wife. When last did you write to her? Whether on paper or electronically. Jesus did not stop here. Do you know God is talking, 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 talking. I don't know anybody who talks like God. He wrote this big book. He said it's not enough. He gave us Alos Paracletus. He wants to keep talking. He didn't stop there. He gave you a pastor. Ha, ha, which kind of communication God is this? See, a lot of marriages are failing because communication is not on point. This is how the one who told us how to marry showed us. I've identified three sources of speaking. Written, spirit, pastor. Some of you are still dreaming. Do you know how many angels are here? I think I came with more than 10,000 actually. They just do the maths. Why are they ministering spirits? See how much he's talking. Why are you singing all the way over when me and you're crying? He's speaking. Then he put musicians. He's still talking. Then he made you, you know, see, when you go on IG eh, and you're following all those amable people, you want an amable destiny. Finish. To be, to be, I'll be reading story of, oh my God, did that really happen? Eh, he'll be arguing back and forth. I know what I follow. On Instagram, we have over 54,000 following at the moment. We're following less than 300. I don't do follow for follow. What am I following you for? What will I get if I follow you? Because God wants channels to speak to me. So I must speak the vessels by which he speaks. Continue. So just as the church submits to Christ, as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. 
It's in your Bible. It's Ephesians 5 we're reading. This is just message translation. To make it easier. A love marked by what? Giving, not by getting. I'll let Julia say some things here, but let me say this. We love him because he first loved us. My dear sister, principle number one, if you are pushing him to feel the relationship, you see that car where they push, he goes to knock. A man that loves you doesn't need encouragement to show it. I need you to quote it. A man that loves you does not need a push to show it. So he has not messaged you in three days. You are chatting me for counseling. No. Give yourself sense. If he doesn't respond until you push, push, push. You are complaining. Now, let me tell you, for a lot of them, the problem is he was not even so before. You knew when it was doing him. How do you push this after marriage? My dear brothers, hi, I was telling our school of marriage this yesterday, they thought it was a joke. A lot of women arrive at men who post faster because their men did not engage their emotion. It's like they married them and began to wind them down. No more attention, no more communication, no more loving, no more lavish loving. That's why you see some very loved women. Menopause goes further. Come and tell me it's medical. But a woman who gradually moves from two times sex a week to one time a week to one time in two weeks to one time in one month, you think it's age. It's not age, it's lack of engagement. Something is not happening in our emotion. And I've not seen a place where women are damaged that way, like in Africa. And I'll prove it to you. You gave her belle, she carried it. You left the entire kitchen to her. Your laundry down to your boxer is her responsibility. Then you come home, you want to do, do what? Something's wrong with you. A lot of women are, are burdened. It's the responsibility of a man to unburden her. I'll give you an example here, then I'll, I'll let her shoot. 2019, our ninth anniversary. Somehow, I didn't even know COVID was coming at the 10th. So, you know, we had come through two years of some real financial issues. Somebody cost us a financial situation. So I just felt, let me reward my wife at a very special level. So, you know, you know the principle of pay small, small, PSS. You know, that's why I say if a man loves you, eh, anniversary for December by July, I started PSS with the travel agents. I mean, we had traveled to different other countries, but the Dubai that everybody goes, she had not gone. So I'm like, let me just reward this woman with another vacation. Just listen, you know. I went as far as through her boss, got her permission off work for the days. I mean, I did PSS. She didn't know. It was going to be a surprise. So in December, we got family and friends to the house to unveil the surprise, a day to the anniversary. So women are already feeling good. That's how much you can make a woman easy. So we unveiled it, and I said, we're headed to the airport now. Hey, Guinea. In the airline, she had never flown. By the way, we're wearing our crested vest. They thought we were doing honeymoon. I told the air hostess, the honey guinea, nine years in. They were all surprised. I made them celebrate us in the plane. She has to feel good. See, we got to Dubai. Eh? Let me tell you the truth. Even when I messed, it was romantic. <laughs> Everything was romantic. You say your wife is not turned on. Turned on. They left the switch in Nigeria. They owned it in Nigeria and left the switch in Nigeria. <laughs> Your wife is not turned on. Something's wrong with you. You are not moving. I say, Mumu got in my hand. You are talking. My life goal with this woman is to keep her perpetually. Continue. <laughs> Everybody, repeat after me. Marriage is work. Marriage is work. It doesn't happen by accident. You see, we always preach this. If you're entering marriage, you must enter it with the farmer's mentality. Bible says it is a love that always gives. It's not focused on getting. Yes, you will get. But don't just marry because of the, you know, the love you want to feel. If you don't give it, you are not entitled as, a, as in you don't get it back. Let me tell you what a farmer does. When a farmer wants a harvest, he doesn't just go to the farm and says, Eureka, I, I, I'm harvesting. He goes to the farm, he tills the ground, he plants the seed, he waters it, he goes back, he prunes it, he weeds the ground. And he waits patiently for that seed to grow and, jam, and, and, and you know, blossom and bring forth the harvest. That's what you do. 
If you don't make that investment, you won't reap any profit. So that's what the Bible is telling you to do. It's not about focusing on getting. I'll just run through that scripture. We're almost out of uh, time. It says, it says Christ's, love, Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are really doing themselves a favor since they are already one in marriage. That's what I'm saying. It's favor to me. My response. Uh, let me say this to you. I am actually a washing machine. My responsibility is not to complain against dirt. It's to wash. Why are you complaining over what you should wash? Julia doesn't present herself to me. I present her to me. Julia is a picture of my washing. So you have brothers complaining left, right, center who are making little or no investment in the place they are complaining. Let me say this to you. When you are done telling me how bad your wife is, I'll tell you how bad your washing is. Did you hear what she said about wait patiently for a harvest? How many of you plant corn and harvest it the same day? People are too impatient with their progressive spouse. Let me shock you. The Holy Spirit worked with some people that people married for 15 years and they still had weaknesses he was still working on. Then you married them in six months, you think they have changed? Are you bigger than the Holy Spirit? Patience is evolved. He says, as I'm talking, I know some singles, they're adding one year to their marital plan. I won't marry yet. Let me wait small. Hi, I'm going to say this one now because yesterday, oh my God, eh, time. Yesterday, I saw something. I was dancing. You know, eh, there are things I teach and some people attack me. So I stumbled on in my small video. He was saying the same thing. Hi! You know when you get some kind of validation of glory, Hallelujah! He was teaching a singles conference. <laughs> then he looked at them. And this some of you say, you're falling in love. You love blah, blah, blah. You want a man that will X, Y, Z. Let me tell you what love and marriage is. It's an invitation to suffer. First Corinthians 13. Let me explain to you the sufferings of marriage. And that's why we succeed in marriage. Because we knew suffering was coming and we embraced it. But you know people that have a, let's just go enjoy the romance. This is the woman I love. She's the center of my world. This is the woman I love. I do. You make me go. You make me go. She just give you one surprise. Shock you like naked wire. You're confused. First Corinthians 13. Before... <laughs> Hey, time's up. Hey, hey, wait first. <laughs> We're still waiting for Tim Coffrey. <laughs> first Corinthians 13. <laughs> first Corinthians 13. Verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. <laughs> ah, hit and run. <laughs> Somebody say, love suffers long. Please, please, please. How many of us want to fall in love here? Say, I want to fall in suffering long. <laughs> Say, I want to fall in suffering long. <laughs> Say, I will not envy. I will not vaunt myself. I will not be puffed up. Baby, touch my head. I'm your boy. Touch it, touch it. Touch it well. Touch it. Rub it, rub it. I'm your boy. I'm your boy. Yes, baby. Let me not lie to you. I confess to you. For over a year now, we have decisively been without a house help. We have 10 year old, 8 year and 6. The volume of plate I have washed in the last one year plus. <laughs> The volume of plate I have washed, man of God. I bear on me the mark of Christ. See part of the cut of, of, of cup. Some people just want to come. 
I'm the man in this house. <laughs> eh? Yeah. You are the man. Mumu. <laughs> if your boss walks into the office and says, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Wouldn't you think he drank something? <laughs> you show it. You leave it out. Yes, Let's just finish this. Uh-huh. Next verse. Next verse. He does not behave himself unseemly. Does not seek her own way. Is not easily provoked. You want to fall in love? <laughs> Baby, continue. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery, and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church. And this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Are you seeing how clear that is? Two quick points because we want to minister. Two quick points, but just rushing through. Number two thing, we talked about defend the picture, strengthen the picture. How do you strengthen the picture? You focus on the right revelation, the right information, and the right mentors. There are people I look at, I know it is impossible to fail. I stood in a conference, and my pastor said then, they were like 22 years in marriage then, boldly from the pulpit. Because for every weakness Satan advertises, there are strengths we can pick from. And said, by the grace of God, I've been in this marriage 22 years, I've not been unfaithful to my wife. I turn to the men standing around me and say, what category of insult is this? But can we be charged up and ask yourself, in 20 years' time, what would you say? We strengthen the picture. That's why I select what I follow. Strengthen the picture. Third point we have is you seek grace again and again. Why? Without grace, you can't even deliver the picture. It's impossible. You see good marriages and we pretend like we just know it all. Now lie. Now lie. Alright, so uh, quickly just run through this. Why do we need grace? Why do we need grace? Why do we need grace in the marital context? Because you are weak enough to fail in marriage without grace. Uh-huh. Because you cannot deploy the knowledge you receive without grace. You can't even deploy the knowledge you receive without grace. Have you ever been in a situation where see the sense you had all right. Have you ever been in a situation where you know this thing, oh, this is what I should be doing, but you are not doing it. Why are you not doing it? Because you are not deploying the knowledge you have received. Uh huh. Because it takes grace to intercede for your partner, for fact, their soul, for their peace. In fact, this is so important. This is so important. Now, watch this. Marriage will ordain you into certain offices. Let me very say this instructively because we are talking about after you say I do. Marriage will ordain you into certain offices. And let me quickly say this. Number one, the office of enjoyment when it's all good. Number two, the office of intercession when your spouse is missing it. You know what a lot of people do? They fight the one missing it. Have you ever watched any movie that has to do with like a team, military team, they go on an operation or something? When your partner takes a bullet, what do you do? You shield and carry them. Trying to save their life. But what do people do? Look at him! Look at her! So marriage may ordain you into the office of an intercessor. Here's the deal. You don't intercede without grace. Why? How can God be calling the one that is injured to intercede for the one injuring him? It takes grace. And that's one of the offices marriage will ordain you. Whether you like it or not. Because the person you married is not the blessed Holy Spirit. He's a human being. So, that's why you need grace. And there are two dimensions of intercession. The first dimension of intercession is God. Please suspend judgment. Because right now, the person who deserves judgment is my partner. Number two dimension of intercession is intercept them with the light. Because there is just how far I can plead mercy. Light has to come. So when Stephen prayed, of course, God intercepted judgment and stopped it. But he needed to meet Paul with the light. If not, he would self-destruct. 
Because people can actually step out of God's grace by their own leg and enter destruction. And you are interested in this person because this is the person you married. His destruction is your destruction. In a sense. Why do I say so? Do you want your children, you know, sometimes when people just fling divorce on the head, you just laugh. There are children involved who you are about to pass a culture you may not be able to defend. Then children that should be loved and nurtured are now in the tussle of who has custody. It begins to damage something in them. So when I tell couples to intercede, they just feel you have brought Christianese. You know, you don't know how he abused me. You don't know how, he, how she slapped me. You don't know what she told me. I know. That's why we go for grace. Because it takes grace to even intercede for your partner. All right? Then of course, like Paul said, you know, Paul came to him three times and said, and he said, my grace is sufficient for you. It takes grace to retain a good character when marriage is going through turbulence. The next point. You need grace to see through the lifespan of your marriage. Do you know every marriage ordained by God has a lifespan? Every marriage. It takes grace to see through the lifespan. Now, there are two dimensions to that. Dimension number one is that Satan brings enough distraction to make them ineffective through his lifespan. So they can be married for 50 years but a useless 50 years. So it takes grace to maximize the lifespan of the marriage to start with. That we are together is not enough. Our success here is, that we, is not that we did not divorce. It's that we did what God sent this marriage to do. Yeah. Hi! I had the misfortune, man of God. I was teaching in a wedding in Kaduna. There were 20-something reverends of that denomination on the pulpit with me. I was the only unordained teen on that pulpit. If I, when I walked into the pastorate, the first question they asked me from which ministry, I called the name of my local church. I'm an itinerary minister. I'm not a pastor. They meant pastor of which church. I just called the name of my local church to free myself. Then they gave me 20 minutes. Highly timed. Not this one that increased for us. Highly timed. They were watching me. Look at this boy. Let me tell you how that church was. Somebody came up and told them they don't want to make trouble. If your hair is not covered here, we don't want to make trouble here. Irreverent. We don't want to make trouble here. He advised the ushers to give them quickly. Then, coincidentally, they spoke a language I understood. He left English. He turned to the other Sir Henry behind him and told them, let's not overdo yeah, then I mounted the pulpit. I taught my mouth to be controlled that day. I was just entering the spirit. I had 20 minutes, I had to rush. Those kind of messages that when you're editing it, you have to slow down the video so that you can hear. But I came to a point, bam, God just landed on my head. And I said, it's not about being married 20 or 30 years because Orthodox setting have it. They have it very well. 50 years marriage. But the wife is the first child of the house, not a partner. When daddy walks in, even the wife is shaking like a child. Oppression. I say it's not about being married for 40 years or 30 years. What are you doing to your wife? In my heart, you know, you can be preaching to your spirit and your flesh is telling you, be careful. <laughs> hey, Gungu, be careful now. Express you there. <laughs> ah! It takes grace to maximize the lifespan of them. Let me tell you this. Some people are married 20 years. The value of time they spent quarreling and keeping malice is 15 years, 17 months. The actual value of the marriage that they used to serve God. Make your closing comments. That time is running down. <laughs> Any submission he makes, I adopt. Oh my God. Any? This is how we we'll come and make some people now be desiring marriage work. Any submission he makes, I adopt it. Rise on your feet.